Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are looking at a 2006 Saturn Ion 2.2 liter and it has a engine misfire and the owner suspects a engine mechanical fault and I believe him because I went out there to the parking lot and did a clear flood mode on this one. Uh, a lot of GMs allow for clear flood mode and I love that. And I would like for you all to hear it. So we're going to push down the gas pedal all the way and crank it. And there you have it. We have an inconsistent cranking rhythm. Uh, theoretically, every cylinder places an equal load on the starter. And they all should sound identical. But this one doesn't. One did sound off. This is a four cylinder. You could hear every fourth was a little slower than the rest. And we have our Ecotech engine. Let me just go ahead and grab a light. Now, I'm pretty pumped up since I just came back from Super Saturday, which was an awesome event. So I hope you all didn't mind the last video that I did. I'm sorry, I'm just grabbing a battery. Um, okay, let's get you all some lighting and bring you up close so you can all see. So there it is, our Ecotech. And let's remove this engine cover. You know me, do a clear flood first, do a relative compression next. Um, the issue will be the sink. I may have to back probe. I got to see what kind of coil this is. Uh, if I, I don't memorize everything there is to know about each car, but I couldn't say if this is a smart coil in which the f it receives a five volt signal and not a primary, but even then we could still sync it. So time to look up a diagram let's do that first before we go too crazy I do want to take a look at which wire I could use this looks like a good wire to clamp around I hope you all can see it let me see this wire right here looks like a pretty good wire to uh, clamp around for the rel relative compression test so I did pull up service info you know I, I, I input the VIN first before starting the video and I just want to pull a diagram in order to get a sync so let's go to diagrams I did start up my Pico beforehand um, since you know the owner said that he suspected a uh, mechanical fault and even if he didn't I still like to start my Pico up <laughs> Because more than likely, if you don't have your scope running and ready, you may not use it. And that's just the truth. <laughs> and it looks like we have a single coil for all four cylinders. And it is, there's a, two control wires. There's one and four and two and three. So it is not going to help us in the relative compression test. I think I might have to do this one a bit differently. Uh, rather than to, you know what, let me type in coil. Take a look at the description and operation. Um, okay, correct. One and four and two and three. Pin six is one and four. If I wanted to sync to number one, I still would have to guess whether I'm looking at one or four. Um, if I wanted to back probe the ignition coil. So that doesn't look too good for me. I, we already are suspecting an engine mechanical fault. We already did a clear flood to also steer us in that direction. I don't see a problem with going in cylinder on number one as a sink. Now, yes, it's a little more work. I, I might be on the wrong cylinder from the get-go, but at least we have a sink and we'll be able to find out what our suspect cylinder is so let me just pull up the firing order which is probably one three four two 
um, one, three, four, two, and we're just going to sync to number one in cylinder. I don't see a better way to be honest with you. So we're going to disable ignition and injector pulse. Hopefully we have an injector fuse that we could just remove. Um, injectors, fuse number 16, 10 amps. Let's bring you closer so you can see it. There it is, number 16, 10 amp injector fuse. And where is our number 16? Our number 16 is right here under the 30 relay. So let's go ahead and line this up. It looks like this is a very uh, funny, <laughs> funny looking thing going on here. I got to tell you. It looks like it goes like this, you know, it, it's, <laughs> why would they do that? I don't know, but it looks like 16 would be this one right here. So, you know what, let's pull the fuse and find out if we are correct. I like to keep some of these around, these fuse pullers. This one's a little worn out already, so it doesn't like to grab. Okay, time for plan B. Trusty old needle nose pliers. And let's attempt the crank here and see if we are correct. Awesome. So we have disabled our injectors in order to not ruin our waveform due to cylinder wash. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this coil real quick. So let me set you up. And we're just about there, sorry. It is always the 10 millimeter that's missing, so that's perfect timing, I gotta tell you. So we got four. Might need a little persuasion. Good enough for me. Some boots like to stay behind. No boot left behind. And this would be our number one. So let's go ahead and remove that spark plug. Mind you, I might get some, some feedback about that because you know you're supposed to do testing this we're we're in the we have a sense of direction already engine mechanical so right now we're attempting to identify which cylinder it is with a synced relative compression test we can't sync it to ignition sorry i'm just reiterating can't sync it, uh, sync it to ignition because we would still be guessing as to whether it was one coil or the other. I believe this is the correct one, and it is. I'm gonna put our WPS in here. Of 
go ahead and turn it on. Let it calibrate. Do its one, two, three. I'm just grabbing my cables. Sorry. Hope you don't mind. Where is my adapter? There's my adapter. Love this thing. BNC to BNC is nice, but this is always great to have as well. So that's our sink. Now we need to hook up our amp clamp over here. Oops, it is. My microphone fell, sorry. Um, <clears throat> here's our amp clamp. I like to hold it down and set it to indefinite on time. Otherwise it would shut down on me after a certain amount of time. There's our positive sign. Our starter is that way. So we put it the other way, <laughs> the opposite way. <laughs> I won't get into the whole electron flow and this and that and we're just keeping it simple the positive goes towards the ground so watch me get it wrong <laughs> oh sorry I trying to get into the swing of things again keep forgetting I'm gonna put you over here and we're gonna set up the picoscope our number our a is the WPS range 1 and our B is channel B is our current clamp 2000 amp mode make sure you turn it on that happens to me all the time for some reason it likes to default to off. I like to put a bunch of time, so I put about 20 seconds per division. That should be more than enough. And I think we're set. We already disconnected the injector, so there, all I have to do really is turn the key. I don't have to hold open the throttle, even though you probably should with an insulin in there. But let's see where it goes. And of course, I got the current clamp wrong. <laughs> I'm so used to doing it at the battery. But I didn't, so. <laughs> we all make mistakes, right? So let's just flip over our clamp. I know I'm going to get a couple thumbs down for that one. <laughs> and let's do it again. Let me turn off my clamp real quick. I like to save the battery. And my transducer. And let's go ahead and stop our capture. And zoom in. <clears throat> it looks like our firing order is 1342. And we are synced to number one. And let's bring this up a bit so that it could be easier to see. Mm, I have this blocking. If you go down here, those of you who have picoscopes, um, you can change certain scale, the scale and offset to this. So what I personally like to do is make the waveform a little bigger if I have to. And then zoom in again. So it looks like three is our issue. And it's nice to see the incident their relationship to the current capture, right? I don't do this too often, to be honest with you. But it's nice to see that they line up. But anyway, our suspect is number three. 
Uh, next step for me is an intake pulse. And I'm wondering if I should just go in cylinder on number three. Just so you could see, we could see what's going on in there. Um, I think we should. So let's bring you along. And let's swap over everything. We're going to sink to number three. And do an intake pulse. Mind you, I'm not great with um, seeing leakages through uh, an incident or waveform. I just know, I can tell that there is a leakage. I couldn't tell you where it's going necessarily. So those of you who think that I'm thinking that I do redundant, I'm doing redundant testing. You may be right, but I'm not great with finding leakages through an in-cylinder waveform. I mean, pinpointing where it's going. You know, I can I can confirm leakage. I cannot confirm that it's um, going in any particular place. So. Let's go ahead and uh, reinstall our spark plug to number one. Temporarily. Use common sense when torquing those things down. That wasn't exactly torquing, but... I wasn't going all full gorilla on it either, so just be mindful of what you're doing and you should be good to go. And we're going to hook up our pulse sensor. It looks like this is to the intake and this is our EVAP port. This is our purge valve, so this would be a perfect spot to grab a uh, intake pulse from. So let me just grab some things here. We've got our pulse sensor. The only problem with this now, oh, I could use a BNC to BNC. I only have one of those adapters, so, and I'm using it on the WPS, but I could have a BNC to BNC and I'm within range. It's not too long, so I'm within range. We should be good to go. Now let's see. if this is an, a good fit here looks like it is so grab a bungee wrap it around your sensor keep it suspended and we're all set I believe we could do the relative compression again just for the sake of doing it and Let's get this thing cranking. I just got to turn on my channel for the sensor. I'd like to start at a 0 to 20, plus or minus 20 volts with this sensor. By the way, thanks again, Cody. Cody's Auto Diagnostics. If you guys don't know him, you should. Go check him out. Just met him for the first time. It's Super Saturday, and it was awesome. And... He's an all around, all around great dude. <clears throat> Let me see. I think we're all set. So let's go into the car and give it another crank. Mind you, I'm doing an intake post, but I haven't, you know what, I haven't isolated the crankcase from the manifold so that would be a good idea it looks like somebody has already been in here and it's broken might have done a valve cover gasket job on this thing but you know what that doesn't matter I could just clamp it so let me go ahead and grab a quick clamp which isn't really a clamp it's just one of these suckers Even though it's broken and all, we still don't want any kind of 
skewing of the waveform. So we are intake pulse only. There's no crankcase affecting our reading. So let's go ahead and do this. I hope you don't mind me putting all the setup. I've had requests to do it. Um, and, you know, I know I've done a couple of videos already with the entire setup, but that's okay, I think. Okay, so we are synced to number three. Let's go ahead and make our current waveform bigger again. I would like to make, that's the beauty of the Pico, you can always bring down the intake pulse waveform. So we already know that our number three is no good. And one of the mistakes that I just made, we all make mistakes, is not save the previous waveform of number one. We would have seen compression uh, specs, not specs, but you know, a good one. So I'm going to remove the relative compression, I'm, I'm sorry, the current uh, cranking amperage waveform for the sake of um, just easier on the eyes and we're going to look into our uh, into our waveform here and we do see a deep expansion void as uh, Frank Massey likes to call it uh, that usually is because the, when that intake valve closed that amount of air mass that's in the cylinder is getting compressed but leaking some of that air is escaping somewhere as it approaches the top of that center. And then when it comes back down, the air mass is less than when it came in. So it goes into a vacuum. Um, if, theoretically, if there was no leakages and it was perfect, you would have zero expansion void there. It would, it would level off exactly as it started. So theoretically, no leakage, you would have perfect compression and it will go right back. As you can see, this, this lines up right here. It would go right back to where it was. But since some of the air is gone, it goes below that level. Uh, it goes into vacuum instead. So those of you who haven't seen the Frank Massey video on all this stuff, uh, go type in his name in YouTube and he will explain it much better than I ever could. Now, as for the intake pulse, I think we have a sim uh, we have seen a situation like this before. Where was it? The Mustang. The Mustang had a compression stroke and it only elevated the intake pulse after top dead center. So what does that tell us? I don't think it's an intake valve leak. Um not gonna lie, a, a couple of weeks ago Looking at this waveform, I would have said, oh, intake valve leak, right? But mm, after dealing with the Mustang and having a similar situation and then doing the leak down, showing that it was an exhaust valve leak, it, uh, it just wasn't, um, my, my views have changed since. So any other day I would have, this is, this is an ever changing process here where we're always learning. So would have been any other day I would have said intake valve leak <clears throat> but right now I'm not seeing that I'm seeing a crank related issue um, as we are approaching this weak cylinder it is trending downward downward it is going deeper slightly not much but it is slightly going deeper and then when it is confronted let's put that relative compression test one more time again here that cranking amperage test once it approaches a good cylinder right here, the next one, number four, it seems as if it's a weaker intake pool. And that's the effect that it has. Uh, crank speed, the faster the crank, the deeper the pool, the slower the crank, the lighter, the, the weaker the pool. So this is a crank related intake waveform. And we've disconnected our, we've isolated the, the intake manifold from the crank case. So this is leaking somewhere else. Where? I don't know yet. But we can go ahead and rule out the lower end and we can also rule out the 
the cooling system, the question is, in which direction do we go? Um, the I already took out the spark plug. Should I just go for a leak down? I mean, what would be the easiest, most uh, efficient way of diagnosing this thing definitively? Uh, the crank isn't as easy as one would think to reach. It is within sight, but it is not the easiest thing to reach. But it is doable, and I think I'm going to go for a leak down. We may end up with another Mustang here. It may just be another in exhaust valve leak. And as much as I've been told to do exhaust uh, pulse waveforms, I don't even have a wire that will go all the way to the back without me doing this giant mess. And on top of that, let's face it, I'm not great on exhaust pulses. So I couldn't really be of much help there. Um, my personal way of going through this is <laughs> I don't I barely ever take an exhaust pulse I usually will go with intake roll out crankcase and then cooling system that that leaves nothing else but the exhaust valve but even then could be a weak spring we could put this thing on top that center see if something's uh open with a bore scope I think I'm going to go with a leak down on this one. It just seems like the best way, the, the most efficient way to go about it. This All I have to do is pull out this hose. Mind you, if it was another car where I would have an easy ignition sink, I probably would have gone a different route. I only went through the whole removal of the spark plugs because of the sink issue that we have with these. <laughs> I got some bolts to pick up. So that's the only reason why I did this. I'm going to grab a leak down tester, but first we're gonna put this thing up in top that center. And let me just set you up here. Now everyone has their way of doing it. My personal way of putting this thing on top that center is to put it on compression stroke first, like everyone else does. This doesn't have a valve in it, so I could just check for compression here funny because I just took this off um, and I got to find out what what size is that uh, crank bolt it's either going to be a 19 or 21 I believe so let me just go ahead and start out with the 21 and I hope you are all bearing with me on this one always spin in the direction of the cranking and I believe this one is clockwise so the only thing about leak downs <laughs> you know somebody showed me a trick about this they would um, do the leak down they would get the cylinder full of air and crank it and it would land on top of that center I know that some of the old school guys have done it but I can't say I've I've successfully even done that I don't even I think I've tried once and it was a no-go Might have been easier to just do the leak, the exhaust pulse. But hey, this is what we do. And every now and then my wrench falls off.
My goodness, it does not want to stay put. <laughs> I'm starting to regret my life choices right now. This is the funnest part of the job, by the way. <laughs> Come on. Get in there. Right when I feel like I'm getting close, my wrench falls, so I do apologize. Watch somebody comment, well, my wrench never falls. There's always that one guy. Okay, we're on the compression stroke. About time. Let me just go grab my uh, top dead center. Indicator. <laughs> Which is a quarter inch extension. Never had any issues. Don't do anything crazy. Almost there. And I believe we're on top of that center. So let me just go grab my uh, leak downer. <clears throat> I do need a particular compression hose. Because the WPS does me no good there, the WPS hoses. I have to stick with the snap-on kit or whatever kit you use. That'll work. Now, let's see, where is it coming out of? I already said it's not intake, so I don't expect it to come out of here. Let's go check our exhaust. It's kind of hot. Can you tell? And there it is. Let's uh. kind of breezy. Let me go cool off a bit. Okay. So we have another Mustang situation. Sorry, fellas. I wasn't expecting a repeat. And I know most of you are probably thinking, why are you only doing engine mechanical videos? Um, I get a lot of them. I get a lot of them. And I enjoy them. And I hope you do too. I hope you don't mind. So this is it. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. We're going to see if we get an approval. If I do, well, I mean, I could just do a live stream and do a relative compression like I did uh, on the Suburban showing that it was a confirmed fix. But other than that, 
that's it for this video. I appreciate you all taking the time to join me on this one. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. I'll be more than happy to oblige. And until next time.